it's gone. That was cool. Look at that. Did you see that magical side? Or do you want to move it Well, okay. Okay. We'll go ahead and get started with uh, Mr. Brenton's talk. Uh, a few quick things. Uh, number one, Tech Systems left some uh, free stuff in the back. I don't know what's over there, so feel free to take the free stuff because free stuff is awesome. We also have a book to give away. So the, the first trivia question is, in the movie Hackers, uh, Dave Murphy's character had two hacker handles. What were they? Crash override. Uh -huh. Zero zero. Uh, so the first person that says them cool. together. <laughs> <laughs> the Python book. You already know all your C sharp. You know, I don't use so much. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And with that, Mr. Brenton. All right. We good? All righty. Welcome, everybody. Um, I'm going to be doing memory forensics and volatility and volatility. I'm going to start by teaching you guys some, some of the acquisition stuff, and then we'll move into volatility, finish it up by uh, showing volatility, which is a web front end. So, hi, I'm Matt. Um, Twitter handle is MuchGrok. I go by Chupa Thingy and most of the other stuff. Uh, senior IT security analyst at the University of Iowa. I've got some of those acronyms, uh, incident handler and forensic analyst. Um, and I like to do uh, off-roading on bikes and Jeeps and and that's my my slot picture there. <laughs> would you call yourself a forensic hater? I, I would. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so starting it off, what is memory forensics? Uh, it is the process of examining artifacts in memory or RAM. Um, whenever a process is executed, it is loaded into memory. Um, one of the interesting things about memory forensics and forensics as a whole is it tends to be kind of part art, part science. Uh, there is no real solid playbook you can go by. Um, there are certain places to look, but really it, it depends on your experience as, uh, as an analyst and kind of kind of sussing out what you think is, is strange on a system. So. Um, so we, most of you guys will recognize these uh, pictures of RAM. This one's for the younger guys. This is, this is what RAM used to look like. <laughs> Why it matters. Um, as I said, processes must be loaded into memory. Um, they say with, with memory forensics, you can run, but you can't hide. If, if malware's running on the system and you've got a good memory image, you'll see it. So uh, that's, that's changed the way that uh, forensics has been, the, the way forensics is done. The old standard was always, unplug the system, and then grab the drive. Uh, these days, you want to grab volatile memory before you, you power down a system. Otherwise, that, that memory is gone, and there's a lot of good stuff in memory. So this has led to a lot of breakthroughs. Um, the most talked about was the Mitra case. Um, Zach was talking about um, some, some audio hijinks on police channels. This guy was arrested in 2004 up in Madison, Wisconsin for broadcasting audio pornography over police radio channels during the busy Halloween weekend in 2003. Um, during the time that, or when he was arrested, they confiscated his equipment and the, the detective there who is familiar with, um, with computer forensics as well as child pornography, recognized some file names on his computer and suspected that they contained pornography, but she was unable to gain access to them. Um, the story, is, as I heard it, was that uh, eventually she, she gained some training in um, memory analysis and was able to use like a, a hibernation file. I'm not, I'm not really sure the details, but she was able to pull the, the TrueCrypt uh, keys out of memory, um, open those, and, and prove that, that he had uh, pornography and ended up convicting him for that. So first thing to do, got to acquire the memory. Um, there's a num number of ways you can do this. Enterprise tools, uh, the one that, that SANS likes to teach is F-Response. Um, NCASE and FTK. Um, I know NCASE has a collector, I believe FTK does as well. Um, there are also a number of, of endpoint type products. Uh, I put FireIHX up here, but, but um, I'm sure that I, I think Carbon Black can grab memory for you. Um, but, um, you guys are probably more interested in this, the free stuff. So uh, depending on your platform, you've got a number of options. Linux, the, the one that kept coming up was the Linux Memory Extractor, also known as Lime. 
I don't have any personal experience with that one, but but that seemed to be what, what everyone was pointing to. OS 10 is OS 10 PMEM, which is part of Recall. Uh, Recall is uh, one of the parts of GUR, which we'll get into later. Windows, the one I like to use is Come, uh, formerly Moonsoul's Dump It. Uh, pretty simple product. I'll get into that on the next slide. And then for virtual machines, it's just as simple as copy, uh, grabbing the the virtual memory. And in the case of VMware's enterprise products, that tends to be the VMSS file. So Dump It by Matt Switch. Um, not really sure how to pronounce his name, but he's a... Uh, as Zach actually had a slide up from him uh, as part of the news. He's a um, well-renowned incident response guy. Um, he developed this tool, uh, see, looks like about 2007. It's still available. It was originally under the Moon Souls uh, title. Now his new company is Come. So all you gotta do is go to my.come.io, uh, download the executable. It used to come in X64 and X86 flavor. I don't know if that's still the case. I, I didn't grab it, but um, put the correct one on a USB drive. You want to make sure your USB drive has more space than the, the system you're trying to grab the RAM off of. So uh, eight gigs of RAM, pretty common number. Uh, use at least a 16 gig drive. Run it on the target workstation, and it'll dump the RAM to your ex external location. Uh, here's a screenshot of what that looks like. Once you hit Y, it'll it'll spin. Um, it'll it'll take a while if you're grabbing a lot of, a lot of RAM, but It'll, it'll let you know in the command prompt when you're done. <clears throat> Virtual memory acquisition. So depending on your product, uh, the, the way you get it is, is different. So for VMware, VMware's got a number of different memory uh, formats. VMSS is a virtual memory saved state. That's what is generated when you suspend the virtual machine. Uh, VMSN is a virtual memory snapshot. That's what, what's generated when you snapshot it. And VMEM is their, their kind of older monolithic standard. Um, you tend to see the VMSS and VMSN files uh, in an ESXi server. VMEM tends to be more of the, the um, home, home stuff. Um, volatility will actually natively uh, read a VMSS file. But if you're, if you're using something that doesn't, that expects a raw, uh, raw memory image, you can use VMSS2 core which is a command line tool that's installed as part of uh, part of your VMware product. Or you can use volatility image copy to uh, combine the VMSS and the VMSN file into a, um, a raw image file. VirtualBox is a little bit more difficult. It doesn't automatically create a, a memory image when you, when you pause the machine like VMware does. Um, so you need to use the, their CLI utility called VBox Manage, turn on debugging, and uh, you can use then use a command that dumps the memory into something called an ELF file. That's uh, that's their debugging format. And then from there, um, I believe volatility can can just natively read that and go with it. Um, or there, I found instructions for extracting the raw memory image out of that online. Um, it's a process, but but it can be done. Uh, Windows Windows has virtual memory. Uh, if you snapshot a machine, it writes the hyperfill.sys file to your C drive. So, um, again, volatility image copy can convert that into a usable raw file for you. Um, if you have any of these uh, file formats and you want to you want to see what see the details on them, this will tell you uh, some details about the system. It'll tell you when the when the image file was created. You can use the VMware info, VBox info, and HIB info uh, plugins respectively in volatility. So now you've got the memory, what do you do? Um, number of analyzing tools. Google Rapid Response is a um, relative newcomer. Um, it's, it's gained a lot of traction. Um, it's not something that I personally have a lot of experience with, but, mm -hmm. but looking into it, it, it does look very interesting. Uh, it started as a fork of uh, volatility. Um, as recall, and then the Google Rapid Response is kind of that that whole package, the whole platform they have built with it. Um, I know they have extractors for um, for all your flavors. You got they have, they have a Windows extractor built in, they have a Linux extractor, and they have an OS 10 extractor, as previously mentioned. Um, they also have a, a web front end built in, um, which looked pretty awesome, which looked a lot like Vault Utility, which I'll show you later. 
Um, Redline is one that I have used, uh, former one, formerly Mandiant Redline, and I think we just call it FireEye Redline now. Um, it's, it's pretty neat. Um, it's, it takes a guided approach and it only runs on Windows, but we'll take a look at that here shortly. And then Volatility is um, kind of, the, at least was the gold standard. Um, Vol Utility is a web front end that somebody wrote for it, and those are, those are ultimately you know, what I'm going to be going over. So FireEye Redline, um, Mandiant's in-house in product, uh, they developed it. It originally started as a front end for one of the original memory analysis tools called Memorize. Um, it is a GUI-based uh, Windows program. Unfortunately, it's, Windows is the only platform it runs on. Uh, it can create a collector, which is nice because you can create and deploy collectors using Redline to um, acquire, acquire your memory image. It does have some timeline functionality built in, and um, price is right. It's FireEye gives the, the tool away for free. So, can you define collector a little bit better, like a remote collector? Yeah, a um, fetch? I haven't used it remotely. Um, I know it's something you can you can push out, collect a memory image, and pull it back if you use some. Um, I think you got to use some uh, PowerShell type stuff for that. But yeah, you you can um, load it up and you can create create a collector. And then it creates the, the memory image in a, a file that it natively understands. So uh, special sauce, it's, it's a guided tool. Um, think like a Microsoft wizard. From the point you open it up, it asks, OK, what are you trying to do? Do you have a memory image? Are you analyzing memory, or are you getting memory? If you tell it you're getting memory, it'll walk you through creating a collector. If you're analyzing memory, it, it, it walks you through the steps. It says, what kind of memory image do you have? Do you have a save state file, or do you have a raw file? Um, the other really neat thing it does that's, that's excellent for, for people that are getting started is it redlines suspicious processes. So it might be kind of small, but um, you can see here this SVC host, it identified that as a suspicious process. Um, it has a malware risk index score of 97, and that's out of 100. And it'll actually tell you, it'll walk you through everything that it pointed out that was suspicious and um, how it built that score. So you can start with the, the stuff that, that it says, hey, this is, this is pretty fishy. Um, does have some false positives, but um, it'll, it'll get you started. Um, it also has the ability to export for further analysis. So if you want to, you see something interesting in the memory, then you want to pull it out. Um, it makes it pretty easy to do that. And you can pull out a binary and um, you can analyze it in, in Cuckoo or whatever. So volatility. Volatility is an open source tool from the Volatility Foundation. It's written in Python, which is uh, everyone's favorite language. <laughs> and it is extensively extensible. Um, I mean, that they, they've got plugins for everything. Um, it's, it's a community project, and people, it, it's great. People say, hey, I had a need to look for this. I wrote a plugin. Here it is. How do you get it? Um, there are a number of pre-built VMs. Um, SANS has their uh, SIFT. It's the SANS Institute Forensic Toolkit, I believe. Um, the old one was built on Ubuntu. Uh, the new one, I think you j uh, or I know you, you just pull down the uh, repos, similar to how Zach was uh, showing us to build Kali on a uh, Debian install last uh, last month. So. Um, I'll show you when, when I do my demo. Um, I started with an Ubuntu 1604 image and installed all the SIF stuff on top of it. Um, Kali. Kali has, uh, has volatility built in. And what kind of uh, InfoSec talk would it be if I didn't bring up Kali? <laughs> um, or you roll your own. So um, go out on GitHub, get cloned for the cool kits. Um, if you're stuck with Windows, they provide an installer. Um, nice thing about. about um, Volatility is it does run on every platform. It'll run. It'll run natively in OS 10. It'll run in Linux, and it does run on Windows. So starting it up, you might notice, hey, where's the GUI? Um, how you how you use volatility is you invoke Python and you give it the path to your directory volpy. Um, a lot of the the pre-built ones, and if you make your own, um, you might want to just give them an alias and cut straight to vol.py. Um, General usage, 
uh, dash F, give it your image you're, you're analyzing, your memory image. Um, tell which plugin you want to use. And then the profile is going to be the, the uh, operating system of the image. Um, some tools that are some commands that actually make it quite a bit easier is um, if you're working with one file path, if you just export it as a variable, then you don't have to give it every time you run the volatility command. Um, also, same goes for your, your profile. Once you've discovered your profile, um, you can just export that. Um, if, you're, if you then move on to a different memory image, you just set, use unset volatility, volatility location or volatility profile without giving it, um, giving it an argument, and it'll unset that variable for you. So um, vol.py has, has help built in. So if you're just kind of wondering um, what version you have or currently loaded plugins, run it without uh, specifying a plugin. If you want to know what a plugin does and different flags you can use for it, vol.py plugin dash h. All right, enough of the slides. Let's do a demo. <laughs> Give me a second to do my magic. <coughs> Looks like we're good. So I downloaded the same set volatility as version two point four. Okay. Yeah, the 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 actual pre-built image they have, they'll tell you straight up that it's deprecated. So I, I was gonna use that for um, the last challenge I did and I ended up um, installing it on top of Ubuntu sixteen oh four for that reason. And the install instructions put it onto Ubuntu. Is that the instructions someone's had? Uh, those will be available at the on Volatility's website. Um, or um, I also followed a walkthrough, and um, I'll see if I can pull that up, and I'll put that in the, the video description. Okay, <clears throat> All right, let's make this bigger. All right, I'm gonna try and. Make it readable, but not make it uh, so that it's impossible to see the, the full width of the information. So starting with, um, as I told you guys, I started with an Ubuntu 1604 image, and I installed uh, volatility and volatility on top of it. I actually, I did pull down the SIFT uh, repos and install SIFT on top of it. So um, go to downloads. And um, I'm actually using a set of memory images from the GERCON 2017 Forensics Challenge. So um, I'm starting with this one because I, I know there's something really good in this one that I want to show you guys. So I've got my, my VMM file and I've got my VMSS file. Um, let's start by showing you guys val.py dash h. So. And how did you get the VMAM file? Is it a memory dump on the virtual machine? Those were provided. Um, oh, okay. And then I'll give you guys the, I'll also include that link um, so you guys can follow along <coughs> in the future. But this is what happens when you invoke vol.py dash h, dash h, dash h. Um, gives you all your plugins. This will look pretty familiar. You'll see this a lot. Um, you'll see a lot of the same plugin options. Um, the important thing is it gives you your version at the top, and then it gives you all the plugins that you have installed, um, and kind of a kind of a list of what they do. So I've actually got a lot that aren't included in the base install that I went out and grabbed as part of for part uh, for this challenge. Um, an example of what happens when you give it a plugin. Um, again, you'll see your version, and then you'll see. A lot of the same options because most of the uh, options apply to the same, to the plugins the same way. And then down at the very bottom, it'll give you your module, and it'll tell you what it does. So, I'm doing a vol.py f. I'm giving it my my vmem, and I'm running image info. This is the first thing you're going to do when you have a, a memory image. Um, if you don't, if you don't know what it is, or if, even if you do, um, you just want to know what volatility tells you it is as far as the profile. So um, 
spins for a little bit, tells you determining profile based on PDBG search. This is one of the longer ones. <clears throat> While we're waiting, what was what was cool about the uh, the GERCON CTI? <laughs> we want it. <laughs> okay. Uh, suggested profiles here. Um, it's you're always going to want to go with the first one. It's not it's not always the right one, but it's the highest confidence. Um, it does give you some other information here as well. Um, probably most interesting down here. You see the number of processors, um, service pack. And then you get your, your timestamps, so you know when the image was created. It'll give you your UTC and your uh, local. So now I know what image this is, or what profile it is. It says Win7 SP1. I'm going to grab this. Copy. And I'm going to check it. Um, so actually, first, um, yeah, I'm going to do export. So, so I don't have to type this every time. So I exported my uh, my file location. So now I just do vol.py. Um, and I'm going to give it a profile. And I'm going to use this Win7 SP1 x64. And I'm going to run the, the first command you really want to go with is ps list. It's process list. Um, I'm going to type that into less so we can read it. So process list, um, this basically, it uh, finds the e-process list in the kernel, it follows the list, and it parses the information about the process. Um, so reading from uh, across the top, it gives you your virtual offset, um, the name of the process, gives the process ID, it gives the parent process ID, uh, the number of threads, the number of handles, uh, which session it's part of, and the WOW64 indicates that it, if it's using 32-bit address space on a 64-bit system, when it started and when it exited. Um, this one, uh, yeah, this one's nice. It gives you a nice readable format. Uh, unfortunately, PS list will not show you processes that have exited or are being intentionally hidden. Um, so basically what you need to do as an analyst is you kind of need to understand what runs on a Windows machine. So um, a lot of the stuff, you know. What's that? The process is running under SVC host. Yeah, you'll see a lot of SVC host. Um, that's, it's, I mean, within SVC host, could be running multiple processes. Yep. Yeah, so you want to you wanna pay attention to the process ID and the parent process ID. Um, <laughs> Going through here, you see they're running they're running GUR. Um, they've got VM Tools D, so this is probably a, a virtual machine. Um, WinLog B, it looks like they're exporting their, their Windows logs. Um, scrolling down to where we get to the interesting thing that I'm going to show you. Um, SLUI.exe, they, uh, they need to register this. Um, so going through this, um, when, we, when we went through this in the, well, the challenge, point? pputty.exe. That's kind of weird. Yep. So looking at that, it's got a process ID of 2832. Uh, parent process is 2136. So looking uh, right above it, two lines above it, you see the process ID of 2136, command.exe. Pro parent process of that, 848. Directly above that, process uh, 848, word. So um, I don't know about you guys, but um, I don't like it when Word spawns executables on my system. So that might be something you guys want to look at. How is it? It's organized by timestamp? 
when it dumps it out there? You know? Yeah, I think it is. I don't know that, but it sure yeah, it looks like it. Okay, um, so another way that I like looking at the PS list information, this will give you the same information. Oh, I'm sorry. <clears throat> PS tree. Let me get that to the top of the screen for you guys. So that was PS list. We'll do a PS tree. PS tree uh, queries the same information, but it gives it to you in a hierarchical format. So this shows you um, what process spawned which ones. And so we go down to the bottom here. You can clearly see where explorer spawned WinWord, um, parent process for cmd.exe, parent process for pbuddy, which then was the parent process for two more cmd.exe. So again, that's kind of shady. Um, another, another way to look at the same information, um, actually entirely different way to look at what you've got is PS scan. So this is probably the second or third plugin you're going to want to run. And the way PS scan differentiates uh, from PS list is it kind of does the opposite. Um, instead of following a linked list, it scans your memory for processes and then attempts to, to backfill that information. So um, unlike PS list, PS scan does have the ability to find terminated processes within unallocated memory. So it can find processes that have terminated or, or um, processes that are being obfuscated for PS list. Um, so going across the top, this one uses uh, a physical offset instead of a virtual offset. Uh, and that's denoted by the P. Gives you the name of the process, gives you the pair, uh, process ID, pair of process ID. The PDB is page directory base offset. Um, gives you your timestamp that it started and your time that it exited. Uh, real quick, physical versus virtual memory. Physical is the actual location on your memory image. So if you pulled up a hex editor and you went to that location, you'd find that there. Um, virtual memory is what's used by the running system. Um, this gets to be important when you're running plugins. It'll, it'll, it'll tell you generally what, uh, which one it expects, or you give it the, um, you can specify if you're giving it physical or a virtual location. So, and then a way that we can compare these two outputs is uh, PS Crossview. So PS Crossview will take the uh, PS list and your PS scan outputs, um, as well as some of the other locations in RAM, and it gives you this table. Um, main things you're looking for here, um, kind, of the, kind of the easy button, is if you see something that does not show up in your PS list and shows up everywhere else, that means someone intentionally did that, most likely. So if you see false in your first column and true everywhere else, that means that, that somebody intentionally unlinked that from your PS list. And that's probably something that you should take a close look at. So unfortunately, I don't really have a good example of that in, in here. But that's what you want. Um, after you're looking at processes, biggest thing to look at in a memory image is NetScan. Uh, NetScan will show you your active network, or it'll show you your, your network activity. Um, so here you see your physical offset, protocol, local address, foreign address, state, process ID, owner, and uh, when it was created. So see some of these are just listening processes, but then you actually get some um, remnants of connections. So um, you can actually see some closed stuff there too. Um, as we discussed earlier, I think we want to look at that. Uh, we want to look at that Peapotty. See what that guy's doing, because that that guy looks shady. So let's grab that out of there. Um, here, that's pretty interesting, right? Um, we can see the local address here, and that's the foreign address. So, for the purposes of a memory challenge that might use this memory image, um, I think it'd be worth figuring out what that foreign address is. Now, also, now that we have our sketchy process, we can do some, uh, we can use some other plugins. Uh, some plugins will do use the uh, dash P, 
And that's where you give it a uh, process ID. In the case of PPuddy, we've got 2832. Um, we'll, we'll give it that. And let's take a look at linked DLLs. that back at the top. Okay, so um, again, here we go. Uh, first line, C users fill up price documents pputty.exe. Um, that's really weird for an executable to be running out of the documents folder, so even more evidence that this guy is shady. Um, another plugin that you'll want to run. So is the load time there at evidence of time stopping? Um, I'm not sure. With with time, you gotta you gotta be careful because sometimes it's a it's a sometimes it's just the fact that the, there's incomplete data or missing data. Um, sometimes it is time stopping. Um, another good plugin to run is Service Scan, and actually this one. I'm going to interrupt this guy, if I can. Seems to not want to interrupt. If you run the wrong profile, uh, what, how, how, can you, how would you know that, or what, like, what would you see? You just, um, it'll tell you that it can't find, um, it'll, it'll give you an error message basically <clears> saying that it's, it's not getting the output that it expected and I think it actually tells you to, um, that it might be a bad profile. Yeah. Um, screw it. Oh God's why? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's try another window. That will let you go up the wrong way. Let's see if there's two. Okay. So let's save your previous variable. Yeah, yeah, it should. I don't know. I didn't test this. <laughs> um, so another neat thing you can do with volatility is you know, yeah, I think it wants my file. Here we go. So back to the service scan. I actually did run that earlier because I noticed it took forever and then I forgot that I was going to do that. So uh, service scans deep. It'll show you your, um, with the dash V flag, it'll actually show you loaded DLLs. Um, this is great because it can show you persistence mechanisms. It'll show you stuff that's set to run at startup. Um, so you can kind of go through this. This is going to be, it's a lot of data. So. Um, Again, it's it's about knowing your system and kind of kind of knowing normal. Um, okay, so um, another neat thing you can do with volatility is, um, oh, that's why, that's why. Um, so you can use this command dump files. Um, and dump files will actually, um, 
it'll give you uh, it'll give you a file if you find it in your your file list. Um, so let's do list let's scan. So um, we have to do the file scan. Um, so I did I ran the file scan command earlier and came up with this list. These are all files that it can find in memory. Um, so I'm just going to do, let's grab this guy off the top right here, user.bmp. So having that physical offset, um, I can do vol.py, give it a profile. Um, I'm going to do phys offset equals, give it the physical offset. <clears throat> Um, this command requires a dump directory, so I'm going to give it um, admin downloads. And um, I like using the, the name. Um, that'll include the name of the, the uh, what I'm trying to grab in the output of the file. And I need to give it, I'm going to give it dump files. I'm going to give it my plugin. So what I'm telling it to do there is um, that BMP file from my file list, I gave it the physical location and told it where to dump it. And it says, okay, I grabbed that for you. So um, right now I can go back to my downloads file folder. Um, that file.none right there, that's the file it just grabbed for me. So run file on that guy and we can see it's a bitmap kind of what we expected. Um, go to my downloads here. And yeah, there it is. So I actually grabbed that file out of memory. That's pretty cool. Um, we take another look at CD. So, um, other stuff that might be interesting in here for, uh, you know, if you're investigating someone and trying to figure out what they were doing on their system, um, PSD file might be interesting. Might be able to find some uh, pretty interesting stuff in there for the purposes of an investigation or a challenge. Intent. Intent. Okay, so that's volatility. Which brings us to Vol utility. So vol utility is a web front end for volatility. Down here, um, vol, vol utility. Actually, I'll show you this first. So this is the GitHub page for vol utility. Um, it's written by a dude named Kev the Hermit. Um, you go here, and the first thing he hits you with on the wiki page is installation instructions. Um, and I'll, I'll put this link in the, the video description for later, but um, easiest instructions are Ubuntu. So like I said, I used it on, I installed it on 6, 16.04. Um, it has some, some requirements. It, it uses Mongo. Um, it uses, you can add in Yara. You can give it a virus total API key. You can add in Vagrant, um, and you can add in Cuckoo. It's, it's meant to be kind of a one-stop shop um, to, to interface with all these other um, applications. So the way we get that is, um, like I said, I pulled it down. I put it on my system in vol utility. Um, a lot of the commands live in the volutility.conf. So here you can see my database is my Mongo URI. Uh, virus total, you can see my API key there. Um, mine's special. It says hi, Tom. Good, good. <laughs> that written out, Tom. <laughs> hey, that's my key too. <laughs> uh, the coolest thing here is um, if you enable this auto run and you give it a list of plugins, as soon as you load a uh, memory image into this, it'll run those plugins for you and have that output ready to look at. So, um, and then the rest of it is kind of set up so that it interfaces with your your different um, extensions. So um, 
I wrote a, a start script for mine. Um, this is where I'm really testing the uh, the demo gads. What, what, what was the command line? What's that? What was the command line plugin? Command line plugin. It was command line command scanner. Oh, um, yeah. I'll show you those. Hey, it worked. Okay. Um, I was worried that wouldn't happen, but um, this is what you should see. So it's telling me that my development server is ready. So let's take a look at Vol Utility. Yeah, I'm gonna have to make that a lot bigger. So this is what Vol Utility looks like. Um, you can see here I've actually already loaded a bunch of memory images in, but um, we'll go ahead and wipe this guy out, and I'll show you. Um, so I want to add a new memory image. So I click this new, um, give it a session name. So I'm going to do Kirk on Windows 1. Uh, full path to the memory dump. I think I destroyed the, which one did I get? Um, doesn't matter. So that's a, um, a directory that contains the, the memory dump in it, uh, kind of like the one I showed you earlier. So I'm going to check recursively add from directory. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to grab the memory image from that directory. Um, extra plugin directories, if I want to give it more. Um, profile, I'm going to tell it to auto detect. I can give it a description. And I can give it optional auto run plugins. Um, I don't want to do that, so I'm going to hit submit. So um, that's how you add a new memory image. I'm kind of sad if we didn't get to see the cat, but um, I went too quick. Um, and so the memory image that I was working with before is this 72 dash win. So click on there. And here you can see the, the file. Um, it gives me a session ID. It tells me the memory profile. It gives me the, the created time. Um, and then here it gives me my image info. Uh, that's exactly what you saw when I ran the image info plugin here in this handy dandy web page. Um, unfortunately, because of the size I have this, it might not show very well. So I'm going to probably try and do some scaling stuff and hopefully not make it look terrible. Um, I don't, it might not end up being too terribly legible, but. Um, I'll see if I can zoom in and, and give you guys, um, show you guys the important stuff. So on the left here, you see all your plugins. And if I scroll down, this is the same as, as that plugin list that is when I um, did vol.py-h. So um, these are all my plugins. If I want to run one, I just click the green arrow next to it. Um, up at the top, you see the plugins that have run. And I'll go ahead and make that bigger for you guys. And those are the ones loaded in your startup. Yep. Those are the ones in my startup script. So um, kind of the kind of the common stuff. So um, just going back through, we'll start again with uh, PS list, and I'll show you what that looks like here. I don't know what this is going to look like. I'm going to have to make that smaller. So I um, apologize. It's not terribly legible because of the size, but here's my PS list. So this is the same output as before, but now I've got it in a website. Um, I can control how many entries are shown on each page. I can uh, go through different pages here, and I can search. So there's PPuddy. Um, it's pretty handy. Um, same goes for any of these other guys. PS Scan. Same thing. Um, Is any of those information linked? Like if you click the uh, parent ID, is it going to jump into the other? Um, I know you can sort this way. Um, I expect you to put a pull request in by the end of the. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not an expert. It might be. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, let's see if I can get. So here you see command line. Um, PS list, PS scan, net scan, same thing, same output. It just puts it in a nice, easy to read format. Um, and if my if my resolution weren't all wonky, you'd get 
Um, it's, it's really just a lot easier format to work with. It's, it's volatility under the hood, but um, it makes it really easy to work with and analyze. Um, kind of the, we'll go with the, the thing I did before was um, I showed you guys file skewing. So I showed you the output. I, I screwed up my demo because I didn't run the, the command, but um, you saw the output of file scan. File scan looks for files on the system. You can see we have a lot of them because there's 83 pages here. Um, again, we'll scroll up and I don't know how well you guys can read that, but there's that user.bmp, um, my, my very important bitmap file that I wanted to show you guys. So here in Value Utility, I click store file image. Oh, there's the cat. <laughs> you guys might have seen it. <laughs> um, which then gives me dump files here on the top because I've dumped a file. And here we go. Here's my file. Um, might be kind of hard to read, but it's that same file name that you saw before, that user.bmp. That, that. Except here is really cool because it um, gives me a lot of options here in the, the web window. So hex viewer, I want to look at the hex. I can do it right here. Exif data. Let's take a look at the exif data on this guy. Hey, look at that. Get all sorts of good stuff here. So got our exif data. Virus total, if we want to see if somebody uh, submitted it. Um, of course, I don't think my API key will work. SQLite viewer, um, the SQLite. Uh, we can extract strings from it. Yar scanner. Hive viewer, not going to work on a bitmap, and uh, PST viewer. So again, PSTs, kind of interesting. So um, as you can see, Vol Utility is just a web front end for volatility. It runs volatility under the hood. Um, makes analysis pretty nice. So. Where do we go from here? What's next? Um, I shouldn't have put that link at the bottom. But um, as I was telling you, the GERCON 2017 Forensics Challenge, um, is that's what I was using for the, the memory image. Um, if you go out to this website, and, and again, I'll put this link in the YouTube video. Um, I'll get it out there for you guys. Um, you can actually, the, the challenge is still up. You guys can go there, and you can register. Um, Actually, I did pull that up. Not here, not that one. Go away. Okay, so wrong page. Here's what happens if you go to that website. Yeah. Moving back now. So GERCON 2017. Go down here, click this link, uh, get added to the Slack. Um, the, the guy who created it, Wyatt. He's, um, he's pretty active there. Um, he's always on there, so if you have any questions about the challenge, um, you go over here. Um, you'll have to log in for this one. Um, if you want to take a look at the scoreboard, um, that's kind of neat right there. It's like DSM. Um, yeah, the way I'd, I'd recommend you guys do this, start at level one. Um, the way it was given to us is, is we got level one, and it said, hey, this person got this, this ransomware image on their desktop. Um, go check it out. And, and it's a very open-ended format. It's, uh, he wrote it to be a realistic challenge, and it really was. Um, and then, oh, that did weird things. <laughs> OK. Um, up here, also under level one, you get your, your challenge files password. Um, you go over here to the downloads to get the challenge files. This is where you can get all the, the, the memory images. So um, my intention is to, to kind of go with this, um, this memory challenge. Um, I'm going to give another talk and talk about some of the level one stuff you should find and um, go on from there. If there's enough, enough interest, I can keep going with that. So I know it's kind of a long talk, but anybody have any questions? Danner. You mentioned your uh, non-standard plugin. Yep. Uh, give a short list of favorites, recommendations. Um, I, I found that a lot of the internet history views, um, a lot of those can be really uh, helpful. Um, if you're looking for user activity, if you're looking for, hey, you know, where did this come from? Um, so there's there's separate plugins for for Internet Explorer, for Firefox, for 
Chrome, obviously, because all that data lives in different places. And I, I forgot to show you guys that, but I actually did have all those loaded in. And so um, you can you can figure out if you figure out what browser they're using, you can you can just pull up their their internet search history that way. Is it uh, like um, uh, the version of Firefox specific? I know it's older browsers they move where they put the. Um, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure. Um, okay. They might have different different plugins for different versions. Okay. So um, that'd be something I'd have to look up. Anybody else have any questions? Yeah, is there any sort of timelining functionality other than you know running the search and then sorting by time? There is, um, and I discovered it when I was doing the challenge. Um, it's kind of hit or miss. It it didn't. I didn't really think the output was that great on it. So um, I was. I uh, we did eventually get the disk images, and I ended up uh, running time uh, disk timeline off that. Um, we weren't able to do that at the uh, at the actual competition because the internet connection was so spotty. And it, I tried downloading one of the disk images, and I think it took, said it would take like 14 hours. So um, we actually we, we relied entirely on the the memory images for this, and and you can you can get a lot of really good data out of the memory. So so using this tool and doing this analysis, would you be able to? Discover some if there was like DLL injection going on. Yep. Yeah. So that's um, you can you can get pretty advanced with it. Really? So if somebody had an interpreter show and they migrated to a system process, and you got a snapshot of the memory, how much it was loading, would you be able to potentially find it? My understanding is you should be able to. <laughs> it's it's entirely dependent on. Um, you know, sometimes it, it depends on if you get a good memory image, uh -huh. if that stuff um, hasn't been overwritten. But um, that's kind of the uh, bread and butter is you're you're able to see kind of what's going on in, under the hood, and you can you're able, uh, you're supposed to be able to find uh, rootkits and um, DLL injection and mm -hmm. and all sorts of fun malware stuff. So, all right, thank you guys. All right, we'll take a little break again, and then the other Matt gets to talk.